these uh, aspects. So <clears throat> as the topic suggests, terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. So it, it covers a very huge area and uh, it would be actually uh, unfair to cover in this very short time. Uh, so uh, with an objective of, uh, let's say, to give an overview and then discuss among you about the science and technology concerns uh, related to these terrestrial planets and also with the motivation to encourage the younger generation. I actually prepared these slides. So <clears throat> the talk is actually um, more or less divided into, let's say, three parts. So the first part, I would focus on uh, defining terrestrial planets, what, why, how, and then uh, the second, that would be in terms of the, uh, the importance <clears throat> or let's say the applications <clears throat> and then the implications in the overall solar system. Uh, and then talking about the surface interior, the, their atmosphere, and then um, plasma environment and so on. And then the aspects related to um, uh, life elsewhere, or let's say the astrobiology. Yeah, so, and then also a little bit on technology and then the, the summary and the discussion points uh, as a takeaway message for these three planets in the context of, let's say, overall planetary and space science. So, yeah, now uh, let's see what are actually these terrestrial planets. Here is actually the architecture of the of the so-called solar system, and uh, in the in this axis, what we see is the distance an astronomical unit, and um, uh, the box here this outlines the location of the so-called the terrestrial planets, or or if we extend this uh, almost this up to asteroid belt, then what we call them is inner solar system. And while the outer ones, uh, we generally call um, the outer solar system, and uh, they extend this Kuiper, Kuiper belt and then um, the wood clouds in a, in a far distance. So coming to this box, and then if we look, these are in the scale. And uh, here I'm just listing down the four terrestrial planets. So. Um, here, Earth is included because, as we know, Earth is uh, the very, very unique terrestrial planet, and it is the home to us, and uh, it is so unique that um, uh, the, 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 the science and technology is actually looking for, uh, let's say, Earth-like planets and why it is so unique. And, uh, for example, um, uh, there is also now a science... Um, um, uh, idea going on that are we alone in this universe and uh, where do we come from? So, um, yeah. So in that respect, uh, here Earth, Earth is used as a reference and uh, we can see the, the, the scale. And uh, um, when we say terrestrial planets, so what, what does it mean? So terrestrial planets or telluric these are simply, let's say, Earth-like planets with an origin from the Latin word. And uh, when we say terrestrial, so it primarily means the, the, planet, the planets that are primarily composed of silicate or, let's say, rocks and that has a, has a man, uh, metal composition. So metal means um, in the form of the metallic core. And uh, here is a very nice example, uh, just uh, taking Earth and uh, Earth as a reference. So as we know that these two parts, this is the what we call metallic core, inner core and outer core, and then mantle, and then the crust. And then what we see in the green and blue, this, is, this represents uh, the atmosphere. But yeah, uh, this separation into, let's say, the rocky, uh, rocky or silicate part and then the metallic. This is essentially the constituents or the characteristic being a terrestrial planet. Now, when we say these are terrestrial planets, so what does that mean further or why? 
why we should care about these terrestrial planets. So terrestrial planets um, play a very important role. Well, in, as I told, Earth itself uh, is, is, uh, is, is, a, is uh, one of the terrestrial planets. But uh, today's talk, I'm mainly focusing on this Mercury, Venus, and Mars. So uh, I'm starting with these numbers. And these numbers, as we know, this is the astronomical unit. And one astronomical unit, approximately 150 million kilometer. So what these numbers mean, and uh, if we understand these numbers in terms of their physics and chemistry and geology, then we will be able to recognize their importance. For example, here I'm listing down the, the, uh, some of the basic uh, physical parameters, 440 Kelvin in term temperature, and then 737 Kelvin, 288 Kelvin, 208 Kelvin. So these are actually the surface, average surface temperatures, and uh, it doesn't represent the extreme temperatures, means the, when it is cold and when it is actually uh, during the sunlit. And then this density, so uh, 5.4 gram per centimeter cube, for example, is quite similar to 5.5 gram per centimeter cube. And these bulk density tells a lot in terms of the, of the physical and chemical property and geology. And uh, this number is also uh, good enough to tell what kind of geologic activity or physical and chemical activity might have underwent. And uh, uh, here, the uh, fourth point just listed some of the uh, unique features, 85% core of this very small planet Mercury, and the 93 bar, that is, uh, if we compare to Earth, 93 times, and uh, this is very significant. And uh, these numbers, if we look in detail or if we analyze, then it will tell why it is really important. So, for example, with the astronomical unit distance, right, there is a pattern, there is a trend of this temperature. Uh, but here, what I have circled, this is a kind of anomaly. And this is also something interesting we will see. And this is very simple. This is because of the very thick atmosphere. And the next point, if we look, the size, this is for uh, Mercury is almost, let's say, uh, one by uh, third, right? And then, uh, but if we compare the, the, the uh, let's say, the bulk density, then it's quite similar, 5.4 and 5.5. And uh, this is also something really interesting. And then uh, the, the difference in the pressure bar. So, yeah, so these are the points that why we are actually studying the terrestrial planets. And uh, I think I have almost uh, uh, explained these points. And um, science and technology driven, this is a kind of curiosity. Uh, and then also, depending on what kind of uh, technology is available and what kind of science we want to do. So now let's see how these terrestrial planets are actually studied. So basically, uh, we know the telescopes and uh, from a very rich history using, let's say, ground-based telescopes or a very simple telescopes in the very early uh, times. Uh, but nowadays, they're very uh, sophisticated and uh, uh, very powerful ground-based telescopes as well as space-based telescopes. And then uh, the remote sensing uh, concepts like orbiter or flyby and then um, in the next level, it comes with the in-situ exploration using a rover or similar kind of um, uh, 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 prop vehicles, and then this uh, rover, lander, and then the copter. So uh, these are the aspects how these kind of studies are carried out. And then this is um, uh, also another aspect of study using samples, meteorites, or the analog materials in the lab. But for these three um, uh, bodies, uh, Mars has a, a meteorite analog, 
and uh, and uh, lots of uh, let's say terrestrial analogs. So that kind of study is is possible. But Venus, no non meteorite is available, and uh, uh, Mercury, I think uh, probably very rarely uh, there are some uh, meteorites that are expected to be originated from from Mercury. Now let's come to the second part of this um, of this. Um, lecture. So the second part is how what we do we see on the surface and then what, what kind of, let's say, morphology, what kind of uh, material do we see and then what we infer from them in terms of the uh, physical and the chemical activities that might have been active or still active and so on. So this is uh, for mercury and then this is for Mars, and this is for Venus. And what we can see here is um, if we start with Mercury, then uh, uh, we do see lots of impact features on the surface, and it is actually very dominant. While we do see some features that look like crust cutting, um, um, uh, cutting across the, the impact features or basins, and these are actually uh, um, large in dimension. And these are kind of what we call tectonic features. And this is also another example. While this yellow uh, boundary, it encircles a um, volcanic area. And then if we look on Mars, this is uh, what we know, um, uh, this Olympus Mons. And then uh, this is how the surface looks like, taken from this Curiosity rover. And then this is Venus, one of the highest mountain. Um, um, actually, I forgot the name. And then this is, uh, yeah, this image is actually from the from the from from radar observation. That's why we don't see the clear picture of the surface. While this um, uh, this image, this one is actually from this Venera 13. And uh, as we know, uh, there were many props of Venera, um, and uh, by that time. Uh, multiple measurements were done, and then this is actually how the surface looks like. So by looking at these kind of uh, features, what we actually conclude or what do we observe, then we, what we see, impact cratering, very common. Volcanism resurfacing, that's also common, either in the recent past or in its geological history and then tectonics. So, and then the, um, having said that, the formation conditions quite diverse and that there are many uh, gap areas where we don't know. Um, so uh, these are some of the unique, let's say, uh, observations. Uh, for example, evidence for water ice deposits in polar regions because uh, uh, mercury is extremely hot and in that kind of hostile environment, surviving water ice in these polar regions, that's really surprising. And um, unusual environments means uh, the very uh, extreme environments and the interaction with, the, with such a uh, hostile uh, solar environment. And then here, unique geology. So Mars, we, we, there are ample of evidences that there were activity of uh, of this water and glacier wind activity and uh, some of these uh, are there are suspects that some of these activities are still active for example uh, there are sand dunes and so on that those are observed or 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 uh, captured by uh, by many um, uh, rover <coughs> rovers and then there's evidence for global ocean and then when we come to uh, Venus, then the magmatism or let's say volcanism is one of the very unique features and uh, uh, approximately, uh, if I remember correctly, around 300 uh, million years um, ago. So it was actually um, resurfaced globally and uh, the, the, the surface features we are seeing is, is approximately that back to uh, let's say around 300 to 500 million years, and uh, and and that is something really unique. And then the tectonic features, so not like uh, tectonic plates on Earth, but it has a, a arm, um, 
tectonic kind of activity. I think it's it's called blob tectonics. And then either uh, the geological activity are still active or not. And uh, these kind of references are, are uh, learned or observed from the surface <laughs> observations. Now, if we look some of the other details, for example, um, in these terrestrial planets, uh, the, the phenomena of, of changes or variations or seasonal and as well as climate, and this is quite evident. So the, here, these are uh, some of the plot or let's say observations using Hubble Space Telescope. And the, what we can see is the polar ice cave. And uh, you can see from October 1996 to January 1997, and then March 1997, how the, the spatial distribution of the, of the, of the glaciers or, or the polar caves actually changed. And then this is also uh, one of the very recent literature that brings out the importance of the of the uh, of the geological activity involving with water and uh, what we called uh, sedimentation and uh, and uh, um, uh, and uh, that process. So in this case, what we see is the valley network and then the, uh, the, the river delta, and then uh, a very close up boundary between river and lake, and then uh, uh, one aeolian dune feature. So this is just an example, but there are ample evidence of the existence of uh, this kind of um, wet environment. Now, uh, when we come to the surface, then the surface is uh, itself a prop to the interior to understand the subsurface and the interior structure and the composition. So in that regard, how it corresponds. So uh, this is a very nice publication, uh, a comparative study of these terrestrial planets. And uh, what we see here is just how the uh, morphology looks like on the surface on a global scale. And if we have a comparative study, for example, this is for Mercury and, uh, and uh, what we see in color, these are the volcanic units that's, uh, that is with strong evidence. And then the, these blue ones, these are exten extensional structure means tectonic activities and then the volcanic and then the uh, possible volcanic units and so on. So this is for Mercury. Uh, and then if we look to the Mars, then then what we see is the larger ones and the smaller ones, and then so many tectonic features, the blue uh, lines and so on. Um, and if we look to the Earth and uh, Venus, then it is really something uh, extreme. So for example, in case of Earth, as we know that uh, Volcanic units is quite dominant, and then uh, we have plate tectonics. That's why this kind of tectonics uh, has divergent plate, convergent plate, hot spot, and then this rib zone, and so on. So, uh, so Earth's really, yeah, uh, that's why it's really unique. So, if we look to Venus, then uh, what we see is that um, the impact craters which are actually dominant in, in uh, or presently or commonly present in, in the rest of, the, uh, of, of many of these uh, planetary bodies is not, is not the case. And this is telling that this is you, something really different how it, uh, how it works. So whatever this, uh, uh, the black dots, these are actually the volcano or let's say the volcanic features. And then the colored ones is volcanic units. So, so uh, we see that it's full of this kind of structures. And then there are some extensional structure system. As I mentioned, uh, Venus has its own tectonic uh, process, so-called blob tectonics. And, uh, and the, this tells that not just the surface features or process, but also something very important to the interior. And uh, when we talk about the interior process, then it's really good to understand uh, how the volcanism or, or the magmatic process act, uh, went out and then uh, how long it was active and so on. So in that case, this is a very nice comparative uh, 
afloat, uh, including Moon, Mercury, Mars, Venus, and Earth. And uh, here I have just included uh, the surface morphology or let's say those plots, how it looks like. And uh, if we see, for example, Mars around 1.5 up to 1.5, the major volcanism was actually there. And then uh, uh, intermittent volcanism uh, continued. Uh, and then, well, uh, it, it came out in 2020 and uh, there are some uh, new results. For example, Moon, uh, here it listed 2.5, but now it's gone to 1.5 or uh, possibly up to, let's say, one micron, uh, sorry, one um, billion years uh, from the recent uh, uh, sample return mission by China. And uh, so um, the knowledge is, is updating uh, from time to time, and that's how the science and technology progresses. Now, uh, when we come to this interior, then we see uh, what is actually the understanding so far for the interior. So, yeah, this is also uh, from 2019, and some of the updates uh, are there. Uh, some of the updates I will cover, uh, but I have chosen this one because it's a nice comparative study, including. Uh, not just the interior structure or the interior geology, but the interior physics and chemistry, or let's say uh, the overall science aspects. So if we, if we uh, let's say uh, Mercury, for example, or Mars or Earth and uh, Venus, then here we do see what fraction of, of the core and then the mantle and then the transition zone and then the upper mantle is there and then um, the crust and so on. And uh, this small one, this is the asteroid Vesta, and this is really small, to just 250, uh, around 250 uh, kilometer in radius, but uh, it is also considered as a kind of small terrestrial planet because it does uh, uh, exist as a kind of metallic core and then the silicate mantle and the crust. Yeah, okay, now coming to this plot, this tells something very important uh, in terms of their chemistry and or let's say the, the thermodynamic property. So uh, here we do see core fraction and, uh, and the y-axis is the um, iron oxide. And then this iron oxide, this is uh, incorporated into the silicate minerals or the silicate rocks. And then uh, uh, by, so there is a correlation uh, of, the, of the metallic iron or the uh, iron that gone that has gone to the um, um, to the iron alloy in the core, and uh, uh, we can see this plot: Mercury, Venus, Mars, and then uh, yeah, the Besta, and then uh, the Earth uh, is also given as an example. So, um, so um, in, in planetary science. Uh, understanding or probing the interior is actually very challenging. And uh, uh, most of the studies or references are taken from, from the surface studies or remote sensing studies, but there are uh, some uh, very nice um, geophysical kind of studies. Uh, and uh, Apollo, for example, is, an, uh, is, is a very nice uh, evidence or the science. So uh, now, uh, before coming to some of the internal uh, aspects, I'm uh, just trying to cover these terrestrial planets, the importance in terms of the astrobiology. When we say astrobiology, it is something related to the life, origin of life, origin of, uh, of uh, uh, life building uh, complex organic molecules uh, and also water. So. Uh, and uh, as we know, uh, nowadays, uh, there is a concern and, uh, and the need uh, for searching life in outside the solar system, so-called exoplanetary science, exobiology, and uh, searching even on Earth, searching life in very extreme environments. So in that aspect, the terrestrial planets also serve this purpose. And uh, so for example, uh, I'm just giving two examples here. Uh, so this phosphine on Venus, it was claimed a discovery using um, 
these two telescopes and uh, uh, these data are at 267 gigahertz and uh, what they claim is that when this, velo uh, this frame velocity at zero um, shows this diff or let's say this feature, uh, what they claim is that it is because of this phosphine pH3 and uh, this phosphine uh, is of biotic origin and uh, it means that uh, um, the, um, the, the life is striving somewhere uh, on Venus. But uh, there were subsequent research uh, uh, works and, um, for example, two of these uh, references I mentioned, and then they look the data, the ALMA data, and then this, uh, they see empty data, and then what they found is that the, uh, it is within the error bars or it is uncertain, and that's why um, uh, this, this, uh, this uh, finding is um, under let's say question he was uh, yeah under the question and this is an example about uh, finding of complex organics on mars uh, mars had been remain a history of finding organics because water was there and then uh, and uh, the scientific community is very hopeful looking into this aspect and uh, this particular uh, work by again brought at all 2018 uh, they found the complex uh, uh, organic molecules and then uh, accordingly they actually try to model and then find out uh, the the methane budget and uh, this is uh, showing a kind of a seasonal um, uh, variability and uh, uh, either this variability is biogenic or or or, or something related to geological activity is uncertain. So um, the future works are also going to work uh, to, to uh, concentrate on, on finding um, the complex organic molecules and then uh, and, uh, uh, to, to look from a laboratory and then uh, um, uh, simulation studies, whether this kind, whether is there any a particular molecule or compound that is specifically uh, assigned or attribute to the um, biotic origin. <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, given the complex, let's say, physical and the chemical and the geological conditions, Venus and Mars uh, in this, uh, among the terrestrial planets, remain a very potential target for, let's say, the um, astrobiology or exobiology kind of studies. Now coming to the technology. So um, uh, this one is included because um, uh, I'm not from the technology background, but um, um, when we do science or we want, we, when we want to do science, it is not possible without the technology. And in that respect, uh, the innovative ideas that, that, uh, that comes out, it makes those science dreams possible. And that's why uh, the technology is really, really very important. And uh, I'm just showing an example. Um, this is uh, Indian uh, Space Research Organization's uh, um, uh, um, mom orbiter. And uh, in the background, what we see is the, this Mars, yeah, Mars orbiter. Um, <clears throat> and then this NASA Curiosity rover, as we have seen in the in the earlier slides as well. So, so many rovers were actually deployed. Uh, and then recently, uh, yeah, a few years back, China also uh, deployed uh, one rover on Mars. And uh, India is also planning uh, to deploy a uh, rover, uh, if I understand correctly. Um, so, uh, Mars is, in, in a sense, uh, very heavily explored and in very detail. And these two uh, figures, it shows something really, uh, something very uh, innovative ideas. And uh, this is actually from um, this NASA's Perseverance uh, um, lander. And then in this Perseverance, uh, 
there is also um, the the facility to to sample and then to analyze on board and so on. So these uh, these figure shows the animation how the sample drilling is done, and then uh, and you can imagine that uh, um, uh, very uh, sophisticated or let's say uh, detailed analysis. Uh, for example, gas chromatography or mass spectrometry, these kind of studies that would even tell the isotope studies, isotope information and so on can be brought out. Um, having said that, these kind of experiments are also not new, but this um, uh, mission is in, has incorporated um, <clears throat> even uh, um, even powerful uh, analytic facilities, and this is something very unique for this uh, uh, for this mission, the Ingenuity uh, helicopter, and uh, this is a kind of concept to 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 study the wind speed and then how the um, um, how the uh, near surface uh, pressure works and so on, and they can see. Uh, uh, this kind of uh, yeah, this was uh, th th this kind of concepts would help to to mobilize and then to look into different areas and so on. And uh, um, uh, this kind of concept is, I hope, uh, going to fly or work very uh, in the upcoming missions. So yeah. Um, so technology is really, really uh, something very important. Now um, I will come to the third part that is uh, the recent advancement or uh, the future scope, for example, Mercury. So um, here uh, I will start with the, with the left, uh, the right figure and the, the right figure, it's, it's showing uh, how hostile the environment is because as we know that this is the closest planet and the, and the, uh, being closest to the sun the very uh, energetic solar winds or the uh, the rays or the particles these are actually uh, in contact with <clears throat> with the with this planet and then how such a let's say the magnetosphere and then the plasma environment is actually built up and then how it works on and uh, it's um, uh, yeah, uh, it shows um, uh, the the prominent features and then the temperature profile and so on. Now, uh, this left figure it it tells something about this Bepi Colombo. So the Bepi Colombo is in is in route, is on the way, and uh, uh, I think uh, it is arriving in 2025 um, next year. And uh, it has. Uh, uh, it has planned to study the the internal structure. Uh, let's say how, whether the core has uh, <clears throat> still in a liquid form or um, in a in a uh, or how it is related to its uh, the, the dynamo process or let's say the magnetic uh, 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 magnetic intensity and then how the surface looks like. For example, as we know that the surface of uh, of um, uh, mercury uh, is, is basaltic uh, in general, but it has very enriched sulfur and then this carbon and then, uh, and as I told uh, the, the uh, a very recent study in 2000, uh, I think 2022, uh, I think, yeah, uh, 22 or 20, I forgot. So that paper brings out <clears throat> that the core radius is approximately 85% and that this is something really uh, something really unique, and uh, this kind of uh, um, studies are, are are being planned. So now, when we come to March, uh, this insight uh, probe, uh, this is something really special because, as I told, um, most of the studies rely on the surface or focus on the surface or uh, or, or near surface. Or their environment, but this insight, this is uh, just after the Apollo experiments. This is a kind of uh, uh, of of direct probe to look 
the interior uh, characteristics. And this is the cartoon showing um, the inside lender and then some of the um, features and then the, the, <clears throat> uh, the rover. So the, the importance, uh, yeah, it is showing um, uh, the Mars internal structure, the like, uh, the, the, the uh, best we know from the models uh, or the observations. And then uh, these inside, uh, these are some of the results uh, just, um, and uh, the core size, for example, 1,810 to one, yeah, let's say 1,800. And then this is approximately uh, half of the earth and then uh, these lighter elements for example oxygen should be there in addition to iron and sulfur and the uh, upper mantle 700 to 800 kilometer below the surface and then the thickened material because of the uh, based on their observation and the crustal region i to 11 kilometer this is highly altered or fractured and then the seismic attenuation is approximately three times compared to the moon, and uh, it tells that uh, some amounts of uh, volatiles are expected. So, yeah, uh, this is something about um, um, the 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 um, the atmosphere or the exosphere and the plasma environment, and how the um, how such a the um, environment can be used to, uh, to infer many important uh, aspects. So these, this figure, uh, it's, uh, this shows, let's say, the electron density in the day side and the night side um, in, in this ionosphere. And then we can see the tentative um, layering, troposphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and so on. And then how this electron density profile vary with the with the altitude and then how um, the forcings are actually affecting or or participating and then how uh, the um, the components are actually uh, affecting because of these processes and this is just showing uh, the, the the interaction of the solar wind protons and the, the how the magnetic field or the magnetic tail is actually is is responding um, <clears throat> so yeah and uh, this is a kind of um, uh, future um, concepts and uh, uh, this mars exploration program i just pick up because this is a very uh, novel concept and uh, from from nasa and what they planned is based on three scientific um, the questions or agenda explore the potential for Martian life. And uh, this is something we talk about astrobiology or exobiology and support human exploration of March. So after the human exploration on moon, uh, after this Apollo, there are no any main mission. So um, for moon, it's coming with the Artemis mission and then also um, with this uh, Chinese uh, uh, space agency. And I think India is also planning the human um, <clears throat> human exploration on moon. Um, so this is something for Mars, and then um, and then the dynamic Mars, dynamic Mars in terms of the of the of the uh, surface and uh, subsurface or internal uh, physics and chemistry. And then this is uh, just a timeline. Uh, it goes up to 2040 and so on. And then um, and uh, we can see follow the water, for example. This is one of the uh, one of the uh, well-known um, idea. So the idea is motivated by the fact that when water is there, it 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 gives or paves the way for uh, for thriving the, the so-called life because it will allow to um, synthesize those uh, the required uh, biomolecules <clears throat> and then habitability and so on. Okay, and then now I will come to uh, Venus. So um, uh, Venus, as we know, um, uh, there were several missions on Venus, but um, in the recent past, uh, <clears throat> Almost abruptly, uh, two missions from NASA, 
these um, Dabinsi and then the, and the Veritas and then one from uh, European Space Agency, Envision, and then one from ISRO, uh, Venus Orbiter Mission or Suprayan, and then uh, one probably from China and then the, the Russia. These are <clears throat> into our information. And, uh, and, and we can see that uh, the importance of exploring such a, such a planet that has been actually remain unexplored. So, well, it also doesn't mean that it was actually not explored. It was visited by many spacecrafts. It was, uh, and also very dedicated studies were also done by, for example, this Magellan mission. But because of the very thick atmosphere probing the surface and the subsurface, that is that remains a very big challenge. And uh, because of these complexities, um, it was remained, uh, let's say, largely. Um, limited to the exploration, but now innovative techniques and an instrumentation fast, uh, ideas are coming out in order to prop the surface and then the atmosphere, it's, it's plasma environment and so on. And uh, uh, this is really something very extraordinary. And uh, this figure, um, I have chosen this, uh, it, it, it uh, actually brings out the ideas uh, of let's say the mantle convection and then the the process related to the surface and then how the surface is actually interacting with the atmosphere and then how it actually um, uh, evolve with the space environment and then uh, we can see that uh, in terms of the of the geological process or the physical process how the lead accretion and then uh, in the recent time how the activity are actually could be linked. And uh, this is uh, a very, I would say, recent um, um, results from this um, Bepi Colombo, um, the, the mission to, to Mercury. So it had a flyby to, to Venus and that they, they took some of the observations on Venus in route. And then what they have done is that with these uh, wavelengths, the brightness temperatures are actually observed. And then uh, this brightness is compared with the recent um, um, find uh, recent observations, and then uh, it shows the temperature profile with this altitude and so on. So it is up to starting at around 55 uh, because the lower atmosphere uh, is is really obstructed uh, or limited to to uh, look into detail. So now I'm coming to the my. Uh, uh, summary slide or final slide, and uh, this is just um, bringing out what kind of signs and technology questions could be there and uh, how uh, a person like, like me or you can actually contribute. So when we want to contribute in terms of science and technology, we should have a very uh, straight understanding, very uh, motivated mindset, what I'm going to do. And uh, it means I should understand and digest the problem. What kind of scientific problems are there? What kind of technology problems are there? And uh, what my uh, community is doing in terms of, let's say, uh, the science and technology exploration. And that's why I took um, the, the global context. So if we look here, uh, this table, it, it is from the European Space Agency, their cosmic vision 2015 to 25. So this cosmic vision, and uh, it lays out four important science questions. What are the conditions for planet formation and the emergence of life? How does the solar system work? What are the fundamental physical laws of the universe? How did the universe originate and what is it made of? So it is not just the terrestrial planets, but as I told, um, planetary and space science in general. Okay, and this is something also interesting uh, from, from uh, United States uh, National Research Council or, in, or their document so-called decadal survey. 
and uh, you can see visions and voyages for planetary science in the decade 2013 to 2022. So there is also another uh, recent decadal survey from 2033 to 2023 uh, to I think 2033. Uh, the 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 broad science directions are more or less similar. Here I have taken this tree uh, because it looks something very um, um, correlated with the terrestrial planet. And you can see the understand the origin and diversity of terrestrial planets because terrestrial planets are something that really important and uh, uh, easily accessible and we can do um, lots of, let's say, experiments and then um, uh, and uh, we can understand our our closest uh, neighbors. And then the second one, understand how the evolution of terrestrial planets enables and limits the origin and evolution of life, something from the terrestrial planets, starting with the terrestrial planets. And understand the process that control climate on Earth-like planets. And then uh, this is uh, from uh, Astronomical Survey, uh, Society of India, the vision document 2023, and then it also lays out the, the three uh, aspects, uh, comparative planetary science or, or comparative planetology, where we compare uh, different, different planets, uh, including the outer planets as well, um, but uh, planets or targets that are comparable. And then uh, near planetary environments understanding, and then the small bodies, including near Earth asteroids. So <clears throat> keeping in mind the, the, the vision documents of, from, from NASA, from uh, United States, from European Space Agency, and also from Astronomical Society of India, I just summarize just two points. And uh, these two points is that uh, I'm bringing now terrestrial planets as a, as a, as a topic because I have to conclude it with the terrestrial planets and the Indian terrestrial planets. Uh, these are key to understand many open questions, understanding, um, the, uh, yeah, studying the formation and evolution of our solar system and the planetary systems. And when we say planetary systems and uh, this kind of studies, it encompasses surface, subsurface, atmosphere, exosphere, their atmosphere or plasma environment and how the sun and the planet uh, interaction is also happening. So it has lots of, uh, let's say, applications and then uh, lots of uh, um, open questions. And then uh, second, as I told, science technology. So it should be, the science should be innovative, something, something uh, that would be justifiable. And, um, uh, uh, and, uh, and in terms of technology, uh, in order to achieve that kind of science. And uh, that has yet to be conceptualized, and the many uh, missions are coming. So with this, I conclude uh, the, the the session, uh, the, this talk, uh, my slides, and uh, this uh, from different sources. And what I have shared is just a uh, kind of a drop of water on 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 the sea. Uh, and uh, uh, any suggestions, comments, and corrections are welcome. And um, um, yeah, looking forward.